morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Fall Photography Bench Show. I'd like to thank all of our members who submitted your gorgeous photographs representing the fall season. What I'll be sharing with you now is a slideshow with your images, along with GCA Judge Susie Brewer's comments. Following this presentation, I'll be emailing each of you her detailed comments for your, for your review. Her detailed comments will include both positive and constructive remarks. Susie also tells me that she is more than willing to answer any questions any of you may have. So I will also share her email with you when I send you her comments. So sit back and enjoy the gorgeous photographs that were submitted by our members to the Garden Club November bench show, The Awe of Autumn. And I will now screen share. Great photography is about depth of feeling, not depth of field. This was written by photographer Peter Adams. For this reason, I asked our photographers to write a little something about their photographs. Why did they choose those particular photographs and what was so special about that particular photograph? They wrote some really beautiful remarks and I'd like to share those with you today. Our first photograph is by Gail Hampshire. This is a class one wide angle photograph entitled View from My Breakfast Window. Gail writes, this is the view from my breakfast room and sun porch. The maple tree in the distance overlooks Jordan Cove. It has exploded in autumn color, even in this time of severe drought. This view gives me great joy each morning as I eat breakfast. And a note from me, this photo is similar to many of the photos that we will be sending in to the Garden Club of America for inclusion in the Smithsonian Archives of American Gardens, which if accepted, will feature Gail's garden. Judges comments, this image is technically proficient, showing nice use of depth of field and correct exposure. Our next photograph is by Evelyn Lyons. This is a class three close up color photo entitled Homage to William Morris. William Morris is famous for his major contributions to the arts and crafts movement, particularly his floral fabrics and furniture. The gold faience vase was designed by English artist Sidney Callowhill circa 1910. Callow Hill was a friend and was influenced by Morris's work. Morris wrote, have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. The autumn color in this formerly white hydrangea mimics colors often found in Morris's wallpaper. Judges comments, the composition has an effective point of view, subtle lighting, and the flowers are well focused, well done. Our next photograph was taken by Alejandro Welch. This is a class two color photo entitled Footbridge to the Fall. Alejandro writes Canyon Ridge in upstate New York guides hikers through a forest of changing leaf colors in October. Autumn water levels are characteristically low after the heat of the summer months. River rocks are exposed before the winter snow and ice covers them and nourishes the river with much needed water. Judges comments, the leading lines of the walkway are expertly placed in the image, leading the viewer into the forest. What a successful image. Our next photograph was taken by Kathy Conger. This is a class two color photo entitled Truss Bridge over Lake Cheston. 
This pedestrian bridge is over Lake Cheston and is located on the perimeter trail in Sewanee, Tennessee. It was constructed using repurposed roof trusses and is just a short walk to the Trail of Tears. The peacefulness of Lake Cheston makes it one of my favorite spots on the 25 mile walking trail. It also happens to be the only place with cell service on the mountain. Chances are, if you have talked to me anytime while I was visiting Suwannee, this is where I was. Judges comments, the juxtaposition of straight man-made lines contrasts nicely with natural beauty. Our next slide, our next photo was taken by Jojo Rindell. This is a class three color photo entitled Flight School. Jojo writes, I was on my huge flat rock in my backyard then I, that I lay on when I want to think of my daughter, Melody. I was there watching the leaves blow on a windy day. Some leaves were going sideways. Others were going up in a circle before they dive bombed. Suddenly, something came rolling down from a tree along with some leaves and sticks. When I went over to see what, what it was, I discovered it was an empty nest. Was God reminding me of my empty nest? No, I think he was telling me that Melody is still happily flying. Thank you, Jojo. Judges comments, contrasting orange and brown complementary colors play delightfully around the nest, showing rhythm and in interesting textures. Our next photograph was taken by Laura Frommer. This is a class two color photo entitled Autumn at Connecticut College Arboretum. This was taken at the Connecticut College Arboretum in October, 2015. The Arboretum is beautiful in every season, but I especially enjoy photographing the spectacular foliage in autumn. Judges comments, the capture and reflection of fall color is lovely. The next photograph was taken by uh, Jill Core, me. This is a class two color photo entitled Pumpkin Farm. I discovered recently in an environmental magazine that Route 169 in Connecticut is one of the most beautiful fall routes along the Northeast. We took a long drive up 169 a few weeks ago and we stopped several times to capture the colors of fall, especially among the orchards. This shot was taken at Lapsley Orchard. The judges comments, the perspective chosen for the composition is interesting and effective and the variety of color shapes and lines work well to both frame the view and emphasize the focal point. This next photograph is a class one color photo taken by Dory Singer entitled Mohonk Mountain Resort. This shot was taken at Cope's Overlook in New Paltz, New York. Judges comments, what a beautiful variety of fall colors. This photograph was taken by Lori Dyer. It's a class one color photograph entitled Emerald Lake, a true gem of the Canadian Rockies. Judge comments, an absolutely perfect postcard picture well-focused, exposed correctly, and composed well. And our next photograph was taken by Annette Bourne. This is a class two color photo entitled Emerald Necklace on Muddy River, Boston. Judge comments, 
The scene is well laid out and includes nice color contrasts. Carol Nasik sends us this next photo. It's a class three color photo entitled From Vine to Wine. This photograph was taken at the Saltwater Farm Vineyard in Stonington, Connecticut. Judge comments, the leading lines of the fence take the viewer nicely through the image. Our next photograph was taken by Lisa Cesaro. You'll recognize this setting. A class two color photo entitled Como Children's Garden Pollinator Pathway. The judge comments are a wonderful capture of the monarchs. The flower and the monarch in the back right create a dual focal point. And this is Lisa's second photograph, a class three color photo entitled Fall Fragmites Finale, taken recently at the Como Children's Garden. Our judges comments, very cooperative monarchs in these zinnias. Linda Thatcher Vischer sends us this class one color photo entitled Wilcox Park 2020. Linda writes, in general, I visually gravitate toward forms and patterns, abstracting reality or creating still lifes. With photography, light becomes all important, whether for black and white or color images. This tree seemed so majestic in its autumn hues. The layered ground, the completeness of its form, the light catching the leaves. I wanted the tree to fully fill the frame, reflecting an awe I felt at that precise moment. Photographed at Wilcox Park. Judge comments, fall foliage is the star here with the tree as focal point placed exactly right in the image, nicely focused and exposed. Linda sends us a second photograph. This is a class one color photo entitled 350 Years of Autumn, Wilcox Park, 2020. Linda writes, I love how the past consciously becomes part of the present through our experience of cultural objects, landscapes, and nature. A 350 year old white oak in Westerly's Wilcox Park. Imagine the changing landscape, the history absorbed into its DNA. With good fortune, it will be here long after all of us, our time being marked as one of its many rings. Judges comment, the fence and shadow create a successful leading line to the tree which has striking shapes and patterns in the branches and the lighting enhances the overall mood. Our next photograph was sent in by Annette Bourne. This is a class two color photo entitled Autumn Fanfare. Judge comments, lighting is the star here with the focal point created by the lit leaves and the lines of the tree taking the viewer around the image. Michelle Cutts sends us this class three color photo entitled Time to Fly. Asclepius syriaca or common milkweed patiently awaits a breeze for release of this season's work, ensuring species survival. This photo was taken in the photographer's backyard in the late afternoon. Judge comments, the composition of this hard to catch subject is very well done.
Evelyn Lyons sends us her second uh, photograph. This is a class two color photo entitled Sunday Morning at Lupin Japonais with lily pads. This photograph was taken at Monet's Jardin de Giverny. And as you can already guess, I do not speak French, so I apologize to Evelyn. Judge comments, capturing the light on the bridge is an excellent method to emphasize the main element of the image. Evelyn, I just realized I misspelled your first name, I apologize. Our next photograph was taken by Ann Buffum. This is a class two color photo entitled Wilcox Park. Judge comments, this is a pleasing scene showing the class description well. The two big rocks are dueling focal points. Our next photograph entitled Morning Reflections, Grand Tetons was taken by Lori Dyer. This is a class one color photo that was shot at the Grand Teton National Park located in Northeast Wyoming during a fall visit. Judge comments another picture perfect postcard which will always be pleasing. Our next photograph was taken by Laura Metzger. This is a class three color photo entitled Block Island Rocks. This great shot was taken on the beach at Block Island. Judge comments, this is a creative view of a common subject with a well thought out composition. Our next photograph was taken by Carol Nosick. This is a class one color photo entitled A River's Journey. This photograph was shot in Pocketuck, Rhode Island. Judge comments, this stunning combination of fall color and blue sky and water is the highlight of this well composed image. Laura Frommer sends us her second photograph. This is a class three color photo entitled Gourds from the Farm. The photo was taken at the farm stand of Holmberg Orchards in Gales Ferry, Connecticut. Our judge comments, the shapes and colors of the gourds create a rhythmic pattern enhancing the lighting. Our next photo was taken by Dodie Bump. This is a class one color photo entitled The Pond at Wilcox Park. This photograph was taken in historic Wilcox Park in Westerly, Rhode Island during the Stonington Garden Club tour. Judge comments, this is a sharply focused capture of a very pretty scene. Our next photograph was also sent in by Dodie. This is a class two color photo entitled Fall in Quanaduck. This was taken in October off Quanaduck Road by the Little Quanaduck Pond. Judge comments, a very successful capture of a fall scene with expert placement of the tree and surrounding elements. Our next photo, a class one color photo entitled Mohawk Mountain Resort was sent by Dory Singer. Judge comments, the sweep of the trees and the lines of the mountain edges against the sky make a dramatic statement illustrating the expanse of nature. Excellent image. And our last image was sent to us by Alice Houston. This is a class two color photograph entitled Yellow Maple. 
Alice writes, I was in Guilford and took a photo of the maple tree turned a lovely yellow in front of an old stone house. It was October 22nd, 2020. Judge comments, the juxtaposition of the natural lines of the tree contrast well with the linear building. So that's it. Again, thank you everyone for sending your photos in. Our next bench show will be at our April meeting. So I'll be reaching out to you in February or March. We have lots of fun things planned in photography. We're going to take strolls through arboretums and gardens with other uh, professional photographers in the area. We'll have more tutorials and I look forward to your submissions for our next bench show. And remember that I'll be emailing you Judge Susie Brewer's comments. She actually wrote several sentences for each um, photograph. So um, there's lots more to hear from her. So do be looking forward to that email. And thanks again for watching. <laughs>